Hello everybody, this is the KMN 1971, back again with an old school, good old fashioned, fun filled comic book haul. I've been doing a little side series with the comic book collection spotlight videos, which have been really cool, but I have been buying comics, of course, on the side. There's, you know, of course, loyal to the game. So, um, they've been starting to build up a little bit, so I figured, why not try to get a a comic book haul out of the way. Not out of the way, but it'll be fun. So, unfortunately, unlike many of you, I did not have much luck on the Black Friday sales. There were a couple of good books here and there, but most of the uh, books that I was able to find that a pretty good deal were actually online and uh, not at, the, at my local comic book shops. So, what I did find, however, were some pretty good uh, dollar bin books that I've been meaning around to get. So, Nothing groundbreaking in here, but hey, man, if I can pick up a, a book for a dollar and not pay five, six, eight to ten dollars for a book, I'm going to pick it up. So I couldn't think of uh, a more appropriate way to kick off the video than with a uh, hit monkey, monkey guns blazing for um, number one out of a three issue miniseries. I'm not sure what the first appearance of Hit Monkey is. It's either the Hit Monkey Special or Deadpool Volume 2, I believe, number 19. I don't know if that's the cameo or the first appearance. Either way, I own both of those issues, but I've been meaning to get around to getting the Hit Monkey miniseries. So, especially for a dollar, I thought that was pretty cool. Here is an upgrade of Frank Miller's Ronin. If you do not own Frank Miller's Ronin, uh, you should really make put that on your list this is an outstanding story i, I want to say this was the first story that frank miller did when he jumped from marvel to dc right before he did a, the dark knight so uh yeah i can't say enough good things about this and especially for some reason issue six seems to be the the tough one to find out of the set i i have like a vg copy um i i, I read this story i've read this story multiple times over so it was great to pick this up in the dollar bin for one dollar. Obviously one dollar. I'm going to try to cut down on the repetition. Animal Man number 11, uh, another run that I'm uh, working on from, from the 80s, Grant Morrison. So anytime I can pick these up for a dollar, it's also a no-brainer. Number 12, they're also, I don't know how long Brian Bolland did the, 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 the cover art, but every single, uh, I mean, as comic collectors, you, you would know also. Uh, have you ever seen a bad Brian Boland cover? I don't think so. X-Factor number 10. This is when Walt Simonson jumped on the title. And this is, aside from when uh, P Peter David was on the title, I, I want to say this is the, the high mark for this series. So I was happy to grab this out of the dollar bin too. Once again, I'm from the generation that when I was a teenager, you never found any X-Men comics in the dollar bin. So when I can run across them now, once in a while, you'll get like a slight key, like the first appearance of Jubilee, uh, New Mutants number one, uh, first magic and or maybe the first magic and New Mutants, what is it, number 13 or whatever. But you can find a lot of great X-Men Copper Age uh, or X titles in general, Copper Age goodness in the dollar bins nowadays, which I am definitely all about. So moving on, uh, sorry, little sidetrack there, X-Factor number 13, just an Incredible Walt Simonson, Jean Grey, Evolution. Well, maybe it's actually Madeline Pryor, I believe. But, um, great cover. X-Men Annual, number eight. It is one of my side quests to get a run of Uncanny X-Men from 94 till the end of the Chris Claremont run, which I want to say is around, like, maybe in the 270s, maybe 280s when Jim Lee and Andy Cuter, right before they came out with X-Men Volume 2. So I would like to complete that. So when I can get these little filler issues at high grades in the dollar bin, once again, awesome. So X-Men, and I actually never read the Inferno storyline. I, I jumped off the X titles when I was a teenager due to limited budget and uh, went around the time when John Romita Jr. became the regular artist. And believe it or not, Mark Silvestri never really did it for me either. I jumped off for a long time from, like, say, issue 176, 177 to... I, I didn't jump back on until uh, Jim Lee caught my attention as the artist on the X titles in, like, what, the 260s? So, huge gaps to fill. 
number 241, 243, and Ghost Rider, Wolverine, Punisher, Hearts of Darkness. I love picking up these prestige, quote unquote, prestige square bound books for $1. Uh, this is just good 90s fun. Uh, Wolverine, Ghost Rider, and the Punisher are obviously uh, some of my favorite Marvel characters. Okay. And all for a dollar. Also in the dollar bins, I've decided to fill in uh, some of my Batman run also in the past couple of weeks. Um, in, in the 80s, they had some pretty major Batman storylines uh, in, in the regular Batman titles. Well, Batman 400, the year of Batman Year One, um, Ten Nights of the Beast, A Lonely Place of Dying, and I have all of those stories. But I would like to fill in the blanks and especially try to get those uh, Jason Todd as Robin issues. So, and for a dollar, like I said, these books don't really go for much. But if you can pick them up for a dollar at a high grade, and you're a Batman fan, obviously, why not? So, for fourteen. And I'm not sure if I said, uh, if I actually having a hard time talking, sorry. Um, this is Batman number 412, just in case I didn't give the number out. 414. 416. 421. Four twenty two. Great cover right there. Four twenty four, and these uh, are all written by the great Jim Starlin, who this is a huge departure from his uh, regular work of cosmic type st uh, storylines. But I thought he did a, a really good job with his run on Batman. Between this and the Cult, he was one of the best, ba uh, better Batman writers over the years that, since I've been reading Batman. Batman 425, and I believe after that issue, it went to the Death of the Family storyline. So, with those issues, I basically have from uh, Batman from issue 400 all the way up to um, a Lonely Place of Dying storyline, which introduced Tim Drake as the, the third Robin. And I also picked this one up out of a dollar bin. Batman 448, it's, uh, I read somewhere online that it was the first appearance of Lark. And I ended up mistakenly thinking that it was an earlier version of the character, the character that Duke Thomas, uh, the, the mantle that Duke Thomas has right now in the regular ongoing Batman titles. But this was actually the first appearance of Lark, uh, the female bodyguard of the Penguin. So I, I believe that was originally from one of the Batman animated, animated series. I'm not really sure. But it's also the first appearance of Harold to... To some degree, he's uh, also a Batman character, kind of um, a, a genius, a genius inventor. Not big, but for a buck, why not? And here were the two uh, best books that I found out of the dollar bin, I guess, monetary-wise. Booster Gold number five, it can only go up to maybe towards like $10 online, or maybe a little bit over than that, and sometimes under. But it's an homage to the Killing Joke cover, which caught my attention. And it's actually a pretty damn good storyline. And I'm not a Booster Gold fan at all, but this is probably my, my favorite Booster Gold story ever. Uh, a solo Booster Gold story. Um, basically, he just keeps going back in time to try to prevent the events of the Killing Joke. And the Joker just keeps on basically <laughs> killing him over and over again. Or bringing him just to the point of death. Uh, so, it, w it was a really pretty good... It was a good story. I, I was surprised. Which I shouldn't be. It was written by Jeff Johns. And I am finally part of the GLA First Appearance Club. I, I finally, I wanted to get one of these <laughs> copies. I don't know why, but um, probably YouTube envy. But I was determined not to put, not to pay over a dollar for it. And sure enough, um, probably about two weeks ago, I ended up pulling this out of a dollar bin. Very high grade and pretty cool. Uh, the only uh, GLA story I've ever actually read was um, the Deadpool GLA summer special issue which was pretty good so for a dollar why not okay on to some of the better stuff in the hall 
Iron Fist. Number 12. Uh, it actually has a pretty good throwdown between him and Captain America. A little buyer's remorse, though. It was a fine minus. I thought it was a very fine when I bought it. Oh, after getting it out of the bag, I noticed I had a crease over here and a little bit of uh, indentations. But the worst part came is um, there was like a, maybe a little centimeter tear on the back cover and someone put tape over it. What kind of terrorist does that? So it's probably a VG at best, but I'm still happy to have it. Only paid a couple of bucks for it. Uh, as with this issue, paid probably like three dollars for this. This is Dark Hawk, a Dark Dark Hawk number one, the first appearance of Dark Hawk. Incredible, the Incredible Hulk four seventy four. Just so you all know, this is actually the last issue of the original, well, the second volume, the original volume of the Hulk. Obviously, we all know it went only for like six issues, but for um, the second volume of the Hulk, this was actually the last issue, which I had no idea about. So I was very happy to pick that up for a couple of bucks. Doctor Strange, number 41. Um, <laughs> since my last comic book haul video, as many of you, I went to go see the Doctor Strange movie. And I have to say, I was pretty impressed. I mean, the villains were, I thought, were kind of weak. And you could definitely tell that the Disney fingerprints were over over it, like um, most Marvel movies, just with some of the color schemes that they used, uh, the whole purple almost mascara underneath the villain's eyes, just looked a little cartoony to me. But um, I thought the special effects were incredible. And as I'm more of an X-Men fan and a Suicide Squad fan, but I thought the Doctor Strange movie blew both of those movies away, no problem. And um, kind of like Paul Rudd with Ant-Man, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, I, I, I believe that's his name. I think he is the perfect casting for Doctor Strange. And I think Marvel has, a, no doubt, another hit franchise on their hands. Um, I was already psyched for Thor Ragnarok. And I won't get in, into it too much here, just in case people haven't seen the movie. But I am even more psyched for Thor Ragnarok now. They already had my money before, and um, they definitely have my money now. Even more so, if that's even possible. If that even makes sense. Okay. Um, here's Doctor Strange, number one. Obviously, the movie gave me a little bit of a Doctor Strange itch. This is the number one from the Newberry Comics exclusive variant. I picked that up for a cover price. And here's the one that I really wanted. Doctor Strange, number one. The, the one, though a variant, hip-hop variant, Doctor Strange, The Mystic, uh, obvious, uh, an homage to one of my top three favorite rap albums of all time, Dr. Dre, The Chronic. If you were alive in the 90s and you didn't own a copy of The Chronic by Dr. Dre and a copy of Nevermind from Nirvana, I'm not sure if you were, you were missing out on something really good. All right. Ghost Rider number 50. Just, um, once again, I am a sucker for an anniversary issue. Ghost Rider 81. I've shown this one off before. Well, actually, not this one off before. This is an actual upgrade from uh, from the copy that I that I already had. The copy that I had, once again, looked better in the bag than, than out, but it was probably a fine to fine minus at best. And this one is in very fine condition. Has a couple of spine ticks right here. It's a tough black cover, but better in better condition than the other one I had. And I believe I bought it for around the same price. So, Marvel Tales ninety nine. This reprints um, the continuation of the death of Gwen Stacy's storyline, where Green Goblin ends up dying. Um, I actually never read this story, so it was great to actually finally get to read it, and it definitely lived up to the hype. Uh, keep an eye out for these Marvel Tales, Marvel Tales 98, 99, and whichever one reprints the first appearance of the Punisher. They can go for like $10, $15 online, so if you can get them on the cheap, why not? And especially if you don't want to shell out two, three, four hundred dollars $400 for the actual storyline of um, the death of Green Gwen Stacy and the Green Goblin, which is, it's a classic. Okay, we have 
Avengers 195. This is the cameo appearance of the Taskmaster. Okay. Pick this up at a half price sale. 250 not bad. Especially these uh, later issues. Anytime you see Simona and Udon on the cover for Deadpool, I would pick those up. Actually, I would pick up any copy of Deadpool Volume 1 of this first ongoing series. There are certain um, quote-unquote modern series that I would definitely pick up if if I, if I if available. I um, Deadpool Volume 1, Holly Quinn Volume 1, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, um, just to name a few. Oh. And I was really happy to pick this up, also an upgrade. Deadpool, The Merc with a Mouth, number 12, an homage to um, Nirvana, never mind. So it was really cool to pick that up. This is probably one of my all-time favorite Deadpool covers. I think Chasing the Taco, that's fantastic. <sighs> Spider-Woman, number three, the one in 25, Forbes, I believe is his or her name is. I'm not sure. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about this artist. I just happened to see this in a bin for $5. Didn't know how much it was going for. I just picked it up because I love this cover. This is a red hot cover. Look at those reds. Look at those yellows. And um, it's just gorgeous. It only goes for about 10 bucks online too. So I would snag this one up. I, and just for total disclosure, I think Spider-Woman has one of the best costumes in comics. And this is probably the, my favorite Spider-Woman um, cover of all time. Alright, winding down. Also at the half price sale. Um, one of my LCSs probably about three weeks ago did a half price sale on all Marvel titles. So I could not believe this was on the rack. Uh, <laughs> um, it wasn't, you know, new. They they keep probably about like four to six months worth of titles on their on their comic racks. So I was just I just happened to be thumbing through, and I, I could not believe I came across this for what was it? Came up to two dollars. Awesome. Vision number one, first print, first appearance of Viv Vision. Tomb of Dracula, number 56. As I've said before, anytime that you can come across these Tomb of Draculas in high grade, especially at a five spot, pick them up. In my last comic book haul video, I uh, showed off Teen Titans number 20, which was the beginning of a three-part arc written and drawn by Neil Adams. So, um... I ended up picking up uh, the next two issues also to, to finish off that little mini run. So Teen Titans number 21, guest starring Hawk and Dove, drawn by Neil Adams. And number 22, which isn't in as good condition. Number 21 is probably very fine minus condition. This one is fine minus. It's not as white as I'd like it to be. There's a slight little bit of a spine roll. But with books from the Silver Age like this, I'm a little bit more lenient when it comes to grading, especially when it comes to the wallet also. What I didn't know about this book, though, for our Titan fans out there, this was the issue, and I never knew this, that uh, was the premiere of Wonder Girl's new costume, the iconic red onesie that she wore for decades. It was actually in this issue. It wasn't drawn by Neil Adams. It was actually drawn by Gil Kane in a backup story to this issue. So, I was surprised to find that out. Alright, the last couple of books to end it off. DC Universe uh, Rebirth Suicide Squad, number one. This is the shiny foil. I swore, swore that I would never buy another foil cover since the 90s, but here I am. So, uh, Suicide Squad, number one. Jim Lee Foil Variant Edition. So pretty. I mean... It's Jim Lee. I have a weakness for Jim Lee. He's my favorite artist of all time, and I just thought this was killer. And it was hanging up on the wall at my comic book shop for like three weeks. It was a sale. It cost me about maybe 30 bucks, which is about the going value of it, but just a really cool cup. And then finally, Ghost Rider number one. 
finally in my collection. Ugh. Very happy to finally add this one in there. Um, the price on this book is all over the place. I mean, if you look on eBay, they some sellers are actually charging uh, as much for this book as almost as much for uh, his first appearance. So I ended up paying $99 for this shipped, which I was pretty happy about. I would say it's oof, maybe VF minus. Super Shop Corners. I don't usually do this whole comic book porn thing. That's the only thing that I see wrong with it right there, is that little blunt right there. But, as you can also see, no ticks on this tough black cover. No indentations. So, for 99 bucks, I didn't really want to shell that out right before the holidays, but it was too good to pass up. I mean, the last time one of these passed me by was, um, it was beat to hell. So, I had to pass on it. But very happy to own this. I mean, the Bronze Age is, no doubt, uh, my favorite age to um, collect from. So this is a very um, happy addition to my PC. So thank you all for watching. Thank you all for subscribing, commenting. And uh, that's about it. I will be back next week for another comic book haul. And then, who knows, I, eventually I'm going to do more comic book uh, collection spotlight videos. Uh, the next couple will focus on my indie books and my Marvel keys. And then eventually I would like those comic book collection spotlight series to focus on cl classic runs and just geek out with some of... I, there's a lot of attention that goes to quote-unquote key issues, but or classic covers, but for me, the, the best part about comic book collecting is what lies within those covers. So it'll give me an avenue or a, a, a way to um, wax poetic about some of my favorite runs that I, I think deserve a little bit of spotlight. All right, so that's all I have for this week. Thank you all again for watching, as always, and I'll see you all next week. Take care.